Morning everyone, Sean Barton here from Tour to Side T. Just driving my way to work and don't worry, the phone is safe, secure and nothing illegal going on here. Um, I want to talk to you today about custom post types because um, they are at the heart of WordPress these days and I'm seeing a lot of questions come up in the groups that um, uh, it's causing a lot of confusion really. Uh, so I thought I'd try and sort of break things down for you a little bit and, and to help you sort of understand what they are, um, make you feel that they, they aren't that scary after all. And actually there are loads of things you can do with them um, to really supercharge your site actually. Um, so, I mean, CPT or custom post type, okay? You see that phrase, the acronym quite a lot in the WordPress community. Um, it, it, it is exactly what it says in the tin. Now, custom post type, a type of post which you can create yourself. Um, now, you're all thinking, well, posts, we've got posts, so why do we need anything else? Well, traditionally, WordPress was a blog, okay? And um, a blog has what's called temporal content. You have, um, you write one blog post which has a date associated with it and that then follows on to another blog post which has another date and so on and so on and typically over time you'll end up with a, a date oriented list of content um, where and you can show um, uh, show that to people on your site in the same way that I, mean, I do on my site sean-barton.co.uk it's a rubbish site but it's got about 300 different posts on there from the last few years um, I don't really blog a lot but I should blog more um, and you'll notice that what you see on the home page is a list of blog posts. Um, so that's pretty normal, actually. Um, now, WordPress turned into uh, a CMS, or another acronym for you, Content Management System, um, sort of soon after it was sort of widely adopted. Um, and so somewhere around sort of 2007, 2008, people started going, hey, this is a really good system. Actually, I can I can use this for more than just telling people about my day and taking pictures of cats and dogs and stuff. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's a really useful tool. <clears throat> As we all know, we love it. Um, so, uh, WordPress has all this functionality built in to deal with posts. And then you've got this sort of afterthought on the side, pages. Now, pages um, is non-temporal content. It's what I call hierarchical content. May not have the right word there, but it's a hierarchy, so we're going to go with it. And pages have no parents, sorry, have no dates. Um, they just have parents and ch children. So um, that's what I would call static content on a website. So <clears throat> about us, our services, contact us. The home page, of course, in most cases, is now a um, it's now a page rather than a list of blog posts. And so. We're all sort of kind of just used to using these things, and they are, in fact, at their core, post types. Now, they're not custom post types because they're not custom, they're built in. But don't worry about that, just think of them as post types, okay? Now, so we have our two types. We have temporal blog posts and hierarchical pages. Um, now, what happens if you want to add uh, some case studies or some projects? Now, Divi does this for us. So when we um, activate Divi, it will automatically enable a new post type for us called projects. Actually, I've never used it because <laughs> I, I actually wanted to find my own, and that's kind of the whole point of this little um, this little chat here. Um, so it'd be lovely as always to turn that off, but um, that aside for the time being. When you turn Divi on, you have a project post type. So that is a custom post type that Elegant Themes have decided to call projects. And that is of type hierarchical, I think. So it's like pages. As I, I mean, I've, I've never used it. I'm sure it's, it's has, it can have parent and child um, projects, but uh, please do correct me otherwise. Regardless, it's a type of post, it's a post type, okay? Now, there are, um, we're sort of led to, um, uh, to try and use this by a bunch of different um, custom Divi builder modules, things like the filterable portfolio module, etc. Um, and so, um, much like a lot of the other stuff that Divi does, um, we're given handy modules that allow us to uh, to really kind of get to grips and really utilize these post types as best we can. And actually, I've seen it done really well. I mean, projects is nice and vague. It could be case studies, it could be actual projects, it could be a portfolio, it could be anything. And so there's loads of different demo layouts out there around um, that you know really kind of utilize that. But post types in general um, are a whole lot more than that. I mean, 
at their core, they are a way of separating content of different types from each other. So get that, you know, kind of get that into your mind. Separating content of different types from each other. Now you wouldn't want to have a list of blog posts and inside that list of blog posts have your, pay, your contact us page or your about me page because it'd be anarchy. You know, five, six years down the line, you might have a few thousand blog posts in the system. Where are your pages? You know, there's, there's no way of finding them. Uh, and also the URL structures are different as well. So um, posts, you've got quite a lot of control over the URL structure. Um, pages tend to just be the post name after the URL. And for good reason, because we don't need the date in there. Um, so you don't, you know, it's a way of separating these pieces of content. So um, if you have a blog or if you have a news feed, um, you might want to keep your um, uh, keep your blog post in one little box in the corner and you might want to have your list of pages, your about us, your contact us, your homepage, your services, all that sort of stuff in their own little box called pages. Um, so what happens if you want to have case studies? Forget about the project's post type, pretend that it didn't exist. What happens if you wanted to have some case studies? Where do they go? Are they pages? No, not really. Not unless you've only got a few. Are they posts? They're not blogs. You could add a category, yeah, sure. What happens if you wanted those uh, projects to be hierarchical? If you wanted them to have parents and children, you wanted to have a, a page which says all posts, all uh, case studies, and another page below that that says, hey, this is the case study, and that's another case study. Um, you can't really do that in the current structure. You could do it in pages, I suppose, but again, much like the blog post example, that would get very, very long. So, enter custom post types with a cape, okay? so. We add our custom post type, and I'll explain how to do that again shortly. Um, and magically, in the side of the WordPress administration interface, the back end as I call it, near the dashboard and near the um, posts and pages and settings, you'll see another um, button, basically. And it'll be intermingled with the other ones towards the top normally. Um, so we're gonna call this case studies, okay? So um, you're gonna see a button that says case studies. And you're going to click on that button and you're going to see the same familiar WordPress interface that we're all used to and that we all love uh, that comes with uh, it comes with the post, comes with the pages. So you'll see the, the list of items in front of you. You'll see the add new button at the top. When you click on the add new button, you'll see the same interface, the title, the builder, the Divi builder, of course, if you want to enable it. Um, and you know, custom fields, revisions, featured image, anything you want. And there are so many different easy ways of adding to that page as well and again I'll go into that shortly um, so we're in our case studies and we see the list and we see the add new button and um, it's a familiar interface there's nothing to learn it doesn't feel like it's clunky it doesn't feel like it's different from the rest of WordPress it just feels like it was always meant to be there um, and so you can just start to use this content and actually when you view when you publish these case studies and you view them they will look like the blog posts um, they'll look like the standard single interface. You don't have to do any coding, it just looks like the rest of the site. It'll have the same header, the same footer, the same sidebar, and it'll, it'll just work. Um, now, custom post types, much like your blog, will have what's called an archive page, okay? That is a page or a, or a grid, if you like, so where you can view the last 10, and you press the next page, and then you view the next 10, or whatever. Now, uh, the way that Elegant Themes like you to do this is to add the blog module um, onto a page and um, and then it will show you a, a nice pretty grid with hover effects and all that sort of stuff um, on a page. So you create a WordPress page and you add the Divi Builder on, or turn it on or the Visual Builder or whatever, and you add the blog module and you publish and then you, that page then shows um, a list of your blog content. Now. The way that WordPress has always done it, and actually the way that I actually quite like doing it, but <clears throat> that's neither here nor there, um, is WordPress actually creates a bunch of different URLs dynamically when, uh, with four post types um, that will automatically show the last 10 posts or whatever, and automatically show all this stuff without doing any coding or any page building whatsoever. Now there is a time and a place to add the page builder modules, and that's absolutely fantastic, um, but, um, out of the box. And in fact, when you install WordPress, before you set a <coughs> before you set a static home page, before you tell it you want it to be a page, it's actually a list of your post, isn't it? Uh, and you, but actually, that happens for every single post type. So when you add a case studies post type, okay, um, you'll have the ability in most plugins or code to add a a slug or a URL as we would call them, but it's a slug is what WordPress calls them. Um, 
a slug for the admin URL. So you might want the URL for the, the slug rather for the case studies to be case-studies. And then you get the choice of having a single item slug, which is like saying, um, what sort of URL do we want to show for single items in this post time? Um, and that obviously, you don't really want to say case studies slash one, two, three, slash test or whatever. Actually, it made much more sense for it to be case study, singular, okay? So your archive page will end up as yoursite.com slash case hyphen studies. And when you press your turn or when you, when you visit that page, WordPress will automatically show you a, a nice list of the most recent 10 or however many you've got in the settings case studies. And when you click into one of those case studies, the URL will be yoursite.com slash case study, singular, okay, um, slash, and then the name of the case study. Now, you don't have to do it that way at all. There are loads of different plugins on the market that will allow you to use the Divi Builder approach, um, or, or Visual Builder, of course, whatever, um, to view these um, these case studies and, and, the, and, and the archives in a pretty and familiar format um, that, you know, that, that will just look really nice straight out of the box. Uh, and again, I'll come to that later on. So back to what's the point? So yeah, we're talking about case studies. Well, you could just use a projects post type for that, couldn't you? Yeah, I suppose you could. So what happens if you're using the projects post type for, I don't know, projects? Um, what about if we had uh, um, uh, press releases as well. So we want to show, we're gonna have a blog, we're gonna have some pages, we're gonna have some <clears throat> case studies, we're gonna have some projects, and we want to have some press releases. Where do they go? So first we decide if a press release is hierarchical or temporal. Does it have a date, i.e. does can, do they follow on from each other? Are they date oriented? Does it really matter when this content was published? I suppose it's the easiest way of thinking about it. And with with news uh, press releases, I'd say yes, yes it does. I mean, if you're making a announcement to the world, you know, in 2008 to say, hey, we've just released a new iPhone, and people click on it, and it's the iPhone 10, then they're gonna be confused. Well, actually, they'll be amazed in 2008, but actually, the other way around, if you're making the announcement in 2018, that you've just released a new iPhone 1, then people are gonna be, you know, a bit disappointed. I mean, still better than Android, but there you go. Um, that's another conversation for another day. Um, so this is where a post type comes in. So we add a post type, you know, using a plugin or whatever, and I'll explain that in a second. And we're gonna call it press releases. And in these plugins that we used to set up, you, you literally have to add the name and it does the rest for you. Everything else is generally optional, and I'll explain that. Um, so we add our post type, and then we can just start adding. There is nothing else we need to do. Now, post types um, that come with themes or that come with plugins obviously are reliant on the plugin being enabled in order to use it. So if you're using the project's post type and you move away from Divi or Extra, um, then that project's post type will disappear. Now, don't worry, your data is not gonna be deleted. All you have to do is go and use a plugin or use a piece of functions code or whatever, it's like 10 lines, um, and add that post type again by the same name and all your content will magically be there. When you change theme, what happens is one line in the database gets changed to use this theme instead. Oh, and these are the customizer options, which of course for the new theme will be nothing. Um, so two lines, okay? Nothing else happens. You do not have to worry about when moving away from Divi, everything just breaks. I mean, yes, it will break if you're not using the Divi Builder, that's content, but content won't be deleted. It's probably the easiest way of saying it. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, and so if you want to use something else, then just hit, add the project's post type and all your content will be there. Okay. So we talked about what post types are vaguely, in a, in a kind of a basic sense, and not really how to add them. So let's go about how to add them, all right? Um, there are a bunch of plugins on the market for free. I mean, there are some premium ones, but what's the point? It's free. Um, to add post types to WordPress. Um, I tend to just go to the one I know. It doesn't mean it's the best, it just means it's one that I'm familiar with. It's called CPTUI, Custom Post Type User Interface. Um, and I think it's like CPT hyphen UI. Um, and it's in the, the WordPress plugin directory. Um, and when you activate it, you'll see a little you know, CPT UI button. It'll show in the back end of the admin interface, so the, in the dashboard area, in the left-hand column at the bottom, near the settings, near the Divi link, all that sort of stuff. 
and you click on it, just click on the main button, don't get confused by the subtypes or anything like that, and it will allow you to add um, custom post types and custom taxonomies. I will do taxonomies in a minute. Loosely they are categories and tags, but by whatever name you want to call them. Okay. Um, and it'll allow you to add these just using a really simple user interface. There is no problem at all. You press add new and it says, what do you want to call it? Now the names of post types are generally all lowercase with no spaces. Um, you can use add hyphens and underscores. Hyphens are, are the convention. So case hyphen studies, all, all lowercase. Now I think the plugin will actually do this formatting for you. So if you try and put a capital C in the case, it will lowercase it for you. And you'll be like, hey, what can I do this for? I want it to be, I want it to be uppercase. And the answer is nope, it needs to be lowercase. It will do it for you, okay? Now what you're trying to get, what you're kind of getting confused with here is that the name of the um, post type is actually different from how we see it. This is how the system sees it. So case hyphen studies is just what the system tags all of your content with, okay? Um, now there's another couple of fields called labels. Singular label, plural label. You know, I am adding a case study, singular. And that can be uppercase with spaces. It doesn't even have to be the same as the name you've uh, uh, you've, you've put it there for. Um, as you've put the I've got my foot heater on here, I'm freezing. It's snowing here today. There we go. It doesn't even have to be the same um, the same name as um, as you've called the case study. You, know, you could call the post type project or newsfeed or something uh, and call it case studies. I mean, you never would, but you can. Um, and so we've got this, um, these two boxes, label, singular label, plural label. And in there, you pretty much put in, yep, that's right, the singular label and the plural label. So if we're calling it case study, case hyphen study is the name of the post type. In the singular box, we're going to write case study with a space, with upper casing, whatever you want. And in the plural box, you're going to write case studies. And that's it. Now, I think with CPT UI, archive is turned off by default, has archive, the thing is called. Just flick that to true. Doesn't matter if you're not even going to use it. Flick it to true because it saves faffing around later on. Um, and um, now some plugins might have this turned on by default. I don't know. I only ever use CPT UI or code. Okay. Um, if you're looking for um, something a bit more all singing and dancing, then have a look around. There are um, just type in post type or custom post type into the um, WordPress plugin directory or into, into Google. Um, uh, I think one's the tool set is another one which is, is quite popular um, or the code um, to add a post type is called register underscore post underscore type and if you google register underscore post underscore type as one word you'll come up with the WordPress codex which is the function listing and scroll down a bit past all the technical stuff and you will see a block of PHP which gives you a books example you just copy and paste that, and you just fill in the gaps. It is, it is largely written in English. I mean, <clears throat> there's a big array of data that says um, labels. And so when you're adding singular label and plural label in, um, in a plugin, it's actually filling in about 10 different fields in the, fun in the actual code side of things. Um, but if you'd rather do it in code so you don't have to add another plugin just for something which you're gonna add once and then forget about, then by all means, just you know, fill in the boxes, it's, it takes two minutes. Um, but the function, back back to the, the CPT UI, so you've added the name, all lowercase, no spaces, hyphens if you want. You've added the singular label and the plural label, and you flicked has archive to yes, or to true, whatever the box says. Uh, and then next to there, you can choose the slug if you want to. But again, everything is optional. All you really have to do is fill in the name, and I think probably just the two label boxes, and then press go. And on pressing save, the page will refresh and the post type will be there. It is generally that easy, okay? Um, the code way I've just explained, and there are the other plugins around which will do the job for you. Um, you'll notice that um, a lot of plugins um, will actually add their own post types as well, okay? So just like the theme, uh, just like the Divi theme adding its own project post type, um, you'll find that um, the uh, a lot like a testimonials plugin, for instance, my, my uh, slick slider testimonial add-on plugin. Um, it's not a sell, by the way. I'm just just telling you. It's what I've done. Um, actually, adds a post type called testimonials. Okay, and it does it. You turn on the plugin, and it's there. That's how these things work. 
uh, you, you turn on the plugin and the activation code for the um, post type is run and it shows easy now in, in the case of testimonials that's quite a good one isn't it would you put testimonials with posts or pages or a custom post type and after what is now 20 minutes and 10 seconds of talking at my windscreen seemingly I'm hoping that you're now going to agree with me that when I say actually testimonials don't fit into posts or pages or projects for that matter they fit into testimonials we can call this box testimonials so why not put the testimonials in a box that's called testimonials wouldn't that be great and yes you can do it it's so easy so that was a basic example um, what about WooCommerce now at this stage you're thinking WooCommerce it's an e-commerce plugin isn't it I mean what's um, what's that got to do with custom post types well it has everything to do with custom post types WooCommerce registers about six or seven different post types of which you can see one okay the, the, the post type would you believe is called pro uh, products um, and that has a, a full interface with it and they've added their own sort of, um, they've sort of modified the output a little bit to, to look it would be suitable for products um, but it is a it, at its core it is doing the same thing that I'm telling you to do register underscore post underscore type or use a plugin obviously they're not going to use a plugin because they need to work built in so they've added the code um, but they've actually also added post types for things like coupons I think are a post type um, they've got things like orders and addresses and I, mean, I don't know about addresses but I'm pretty sure orders and everything else is um, I've been using WooCommerce for years now and it's quite a handy little database system to kind of get stuck into um, WooCommerce actually adds a bunch of custom tables to the database as well so it probably wasn't the best example but products products is definitely a post type okay so as you start to look at plugins that add these new little tabs and pages to the left hand side now you're starting to see that they are in fact post types nothing to be scary about that's just how they work so I'm hoping now that 22 minutes and 10 seconds now that you're starting to feel that actually no post types aren't scary they're just something to do with WordPress okay brilliant now Divi okay now um, there are no modules built into the builder that will allow you to make um, uh, to, to make the actual output of these things look nice <clears throat> now if you're happy with the way that Divi looks out of the box that's great absolutely brilliant I'm not though I mean it looks okay for basic sites and the Divi builder is very very useful uh, and I love it I hate the visual builder a lot of people love it but well tough because I'm sorry to say at this stage that February 2018 elegant themes have yet to add um, custom module support for um, for third-party plugins so if you're thinking hey that's great I can drag stuff around and resize it and do all the front-end stuff you can't okay if you're doing anything with a custom Divi module there is a point to this uh, you have to do it in the back-end builder the what, the what I call the back-end builder but what is actually called the Divi builder okay now <clears throat> I really like the Divi builder I've loved it since the second I saw it well done elegant themed really nice job people who want to do stuff visually yeah, great, use a visual builder. I'm actually a really big fan of seeing my content as a little rectangle and dragging it around because I'm a programmer and that's how my mind works. I like to see things just so. Um, so, you know, not criticizing Elegant Themes at all because they've actually provided um, uh, products that work for sort of across the market, really. They're really good. Anyway, um, so when you... Um, when you try and style an archive page or you try and create an archive page, let's say we go to create a, a grid of testimonials, that's a great example. We've added our testimonials post type and, <clears throat> and we uh, want to show them. That's a novel concept, isn't it? We want to show them. Well, you do have the archive that comes with it, so that'd be forward slash testimonials most likely. Um, if that was your slug that you added. Let's have some coffee because actually I haven't been talking now for a while. Oh yeah, that's good. Right, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You're going to have a... Um, uh, to want to show a page of testimonials. And in order to do that, you're going to either have to use the Divi module or you're going to have to just view the archive page. Now, testimonials are something that you really want to show style, don't they? You want, you want to show pretty. Now, the standard single testimonial layout and archive testimonial layout will be how the blog in Divi looks and the project's interface before you add any custom styling at all. So if you had a list of 
blog posts on your homepage, then that's how it would look, just a list of 10 items or whatever. Um, and then you'd see just a list of testimonials. It's not very inspirational. Now, if they were case studies, it'd probably be okay. But we're not doing case studies, we're doing testimonials. So that's what we need to style them. Now, there are um, a couple of ways of doing this. You can go in code. Uh, if you're into coding, then uh, you can, into your child theme, you can add a file called, uh, well, you can edit archive.php. Um, or you can edit, I think it's testimonials.php, or it's archive-testimonials.php. Um, there is a really nice graphic on the codex that tells you um, what file name to use. And actually, WordPress is great because um, before we started using the Divi Builder, you had to code everything. And in order to get different post types and layouts looking different without the user having to do anything, we had to create a file in the child theme with a specific name to the character, um, and then when WordPress looks to say, hey, I'm looking at an archive of testimonials, do we have a testimonials archive page here? And if there is one, then it would use it. And if there isn't, it falls back to archive.php or index.php. Um, so that's really cool, actually. I think it's, it still does that, actually. Um, but you know what? I, I've been coding for 15 years, and Divi is the first theme I've, I've gone, you know what, I'm gonna use a page builder. It's so much easier. It feels lazy. And I see so many posts in the group coming up saying, hey, how do I tell my clients that I've used a page builder? Or how do I stop my clients from knowing that I've used a drag and drop builder to build their site? And the answer is, you don't. You just don't mention it because frankly, most clients don't care if the site looks good. And if they question it, you say, okay, it's called Divi go and have a go, and if you think you can build something as good as I can with 15 years of experience, or how much experience you've got, then be my guest, but you're not having your money back because you've signed it off. You didn't say, make my site with WordPress, no page builder, and code please, thank you very much. You said, make me a site for my business that's gonna make me lots of money. And that's what they care about, really. So don't get, uh, don't worry about it. It's, it's not a problem. In fact, it's, it's no shame in using a page builder. I love it. I am unashamedly say that I use Divi for absolutely everything. I will shoehorn everything into Divi these days, and I do. So, you know, don't worry. Um, so, moving on back to the modules thing. So, um, we want to show a grid of testimonials, don't we? Now, you can't use the blog module because that is fixed to the post type called post. Um, and so, it would be quite handy if we could choose the post type, um, but you can't, so forget it. Now, there are modules in the market. Um, a nice chap called Bruno in the, uh, in the marketplace has come up with a number of different Divi modules that allow you to create some really pretty grids um, uh, as a single Divi module. And it works in the same way as a blog module, I believe. So I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong thing here, Bruno. Um, but uh, you add the module in the same way and choose your options and you get a beautiful grid of testimonials or any other post type that you want. Um, so that is really, really cool. Um, that's if you want to do things, uh, to do things the, the page builder way, and that's great. Um, I also have a number of plugins. Now. I can't, sorry, I can't do, talk, talking for 28 minutes now. I can't not mention my own plugins. I've, I've been nice and mentioned somebody else's plugin first, and so you know, this is okay. Now I have a bunch of plugins called injectors, okay, um, and I'm not going to bang on about them, but they do allow you to use the page builder with a number of custom modules that I've written um, to lay out these different pages. Now the archive page templates use um, uh, use a Divi module called the Archive or the Loop Archive, I've included two, uh, or three in some cases, that allow you to simply add that to a page, choose your settings and press go and it will work. Now this is not the prettiest of plugin in the world out of the box, but the Loop Archive concept allows you to do whatever you want, and I mean whatever you want with your list of testimonials. It even works with normal post types, actually. This is CPT injector. Makes sense now, doesn't it? Um, where our custom post type archive layouts can be modified or written in the Divi Builder. Um, and so that's all I'm gonna say about that, because you know it's, it's just not about that. The video isn't about selling stuff, it's about explaining stuff to people. Um, one other thing it can do though is the, um, the single post or single testimonial layouts. Um, now, when you click on a blog post in Divi normally, it is dull, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's a massive featured image with a list of, um, a list of 
um, the content below and a sidebar with a line and your header and footer. Doesn't fit in with anything at all that you do. Now, CPT injector um, and the Woo injector, the Woo Commerce one, allow you to build a, what I would call a template uh, of your single pages. So build a template um, using some custom Divi Builder modules, save it, and then you can assign it centrally. So on the settings page, you, you say, hey, I want blog posts to look like this. And that's it. You choose from a drop down and press save. Now, anytime you then go and write a blog post and don't use the Divi Builder, now why, you shouldn't really be using it for posts, to be honest. Um, not my plugin, you should use it for my plugin. You shouldn't be using the Divi Builder just to lay out posts. Because when you've got 5,000 posts in the system and your client says, hey, I want to change the color scheme and I'll try to change the layout of those pages, you'll be kicking yourself. So don't do it. Um, so there's two real ways of doing it. Coding, coding the single um, blog post page or any other te single testimonial, single project, single case study, single product, all these different single pages, okay? Or use CPT injector that allows you to make a template centrally. There's a page called the Divi Library. If you don't know what it is, hover over Divi in the bottom left-hand corner of your admin screen. Click on Divi Library and it looks like a post type, doesn't it? You know, recognize that now. You press add new, add a layout, and then you'll see all the different options that are there. You'll see the Divi Builder in all its glory. You just build it, give it a name, and then in the settings page, you just say, oh, single post, use this. Single testimonial, use that. Product, use that. Something else, something else, something else. Really, really, really powerful. Um, but that's enough of that, okay? So what can we do with custom post types that will wow people? Well, testimonials, case studies, um, press releases, are all practical things, aren't they? They're all things that you might want to add to a, uh, a company site. If someone says, hey, I want a news feed and a blog feed, great, I'll do that, custom post type. No extra effort required, thank you very much. That's another thousand dollars, please. Um, so you can really go nuts with it. Um, I'm not about fleecing your clients, obviously I would never condone that, but um, what you can do is you can use it as a tool to get your sites done quickly and more easily. Um, I've worked with a client recently where um, we went the project route um, to add like cars for a car dealership um, and every single one was laid out using the Divi Builder and it was and when they handed it over to the client to say hey when you add a new car what you've got to do is you've got to click load from library and add this layout and you've got to fill in all these boxes and you learn how to use the Divi Builder. What? No! So subsequently we went and used the CPT injector um, and I made a single layout and now all the client has to do is press add new car or project or whatever um, and fill in a few boxes and press publish and that's it. So this really will reduce your support load, not not my plugin, I mean, my, my plugin, well yes, but um, custom post types in general um, will reduce your support load um, from your clients but also make it easy for, for them to um, to use the stuff that you write. And it actually looks a lot more professional as well. It's much easier to say to someone, right, you want to add your cars and you want to add your case studies in, press add next to the word case studies, press publish and you're done, that's it. And they're like, wow, it looks so good. You've made this good system for it. Now they might go, well, actually that's really simple, isn't it? Why are you charging us so much? And I refer you to the story of the engineer who charged an obscene amount of money for, is it tightening a bolt on a ship or hitting something with a hammer and the client asks for the, invo uh, the invoice to be itemized and, um, and the invoice said, um, uh, was it, it was a washer I think or it was a nut, See, knowing it was um, hitting something with a hammer, five dollars, knowing which part of this technical system to hit with a hammer, you know, thousands of dollars for. Really bad example, a way of giving that story across, but it's quite a cool one to, to throw at people. It's like, hey guys, I've been doing this for quite a long time now, and yes, my site looks simple, but let's think about every other product that we're using in our lives at the moment. We Do we really want products that have buttons and belts and switches and things all over the place? Or do we just want things to work? Now, I'm an iPhone fan. You might have realized this by the fact that I've mentioned it and slated Android within about five minutes of talking. Um, people go, oh, you can't do this with Android. You can't do this with iPhone rather. You can't do that with iPhone. It's like, yeah, but why would I want to? You know, it just it just works. And, uh, you know, and, and the it's tempting to think that um, that because uh, iOS, the, you know, the operating system on an iPhone is so simple that it's actually really bad. It's not. It's genius because it is so simple. All the hard stuff it does is behind the scenes. 
So, you know, why do I want to have all these configuration settings? I mean, don't get me wrong. Let's, and let's stop this argument right now. I do want to have configuration settings, but general consumers, i.e. normal people, don't want all this rubbish added. Most people just want to be able to build a site for their clients, hand it over, get paid, have a happy client that's going to give them more work. Um, we all do. That is the holy grail. Here's a site that I did. Didn't take long, but I'm billing you a lot for it because it's a really cool site. Give me more work. And they'll go, yep, that's fine. We'll do that. So that is what the way the world go around, isn't it? So what can we do with custom post types? Now, um, there is a fantastic example. I mean, I, I mean, we see plugins around all the time, um, booking systems, uh, classified adverts, calendars. Think about it. Calendars. How do you add events into the system? Do you add them as a post or a page? You don't. You add them as a post type. How do you add bookings to a system? Posts or pages? You don't. You add them as a custom post type called bookings. Okay, and hooking all this stuff together is not that hard. So you use CPT injector or you make these page layouts look really cool. Okay, and you say, okay, well, actually, we're going to add your booking to our system, sir. And you go to the back end of WordPress and you click add next to booking and you just type their information in. Now, let's stop talking about custom post types now just for a second and let's move on to extra fields. Now, um, well, firstly, taxonomies actually. A taxonomy is quite a complicated way of saying um, that it is a, uh, a tag or a category, okay? So if WordPress said, hey, you add this post type, you can add categories and tags. And you'd be like, yeah, but I don't want categories and tags. I want, I want colors, I want sizes, I want attributes, I want everything else. Um, and so you know, I'm doing a roundabout now, it's quite a busy one, it's snowing. So you want categories and tags, you want everything else that you can add. Um, at, oh, testimonial, you might want to add uh, the company. If, if that company is making lots of, um, lots of testimonials for you, or no, product, there you go, testimonials. But I want my testimonials to be filtered by what product that they uh, are in relation to. Um, and so you want to, you don't add category, it's not a category, is it? It's a tag, it's a, it's a taxonomy. Um, and so when you create your uh, testimonial, um, when you create your testimonial post type, you then go ahead and you add a taxonomy and you call it product, okay? And I'm just smiling at people to let, to get them to let me out this roundabout here, but it's just absolutely chock-a-block. It's really busy. So you let me go or not? Okay, I'm just gonna creep through this gap. Hopefully I won't get shouted at or beeped. Beep, no. Okay, bounce, there we go, and back. Okay, we're in the queue, and I'm probably gonna get beeped out in a minute because it's two lanes merging into one, which no one likes doing, and everyone's just gonna get in my way. So, okay, now back to our chat. And this is Sean drives to work. <laughs> 38 minutes and three seconds. Okay, so we can add our testimonials by, um, by taxonomy. And that's a really cool thing, actually. I, I Actually, I've done it on my own site, I think. So when you want to, um, to create a list of testimonials in the system, but you don't want all the uh, testimonials relating to one product to be showing on a page which talks about another product, do you? I mean, that is kind of what happens in most cases, but what's the point? Why, why are we doing this? It's not really something we need to do. Um, so you add out, so I've lost my train of thought now because I've had to do this roundabout, and I'm now doing six miles per hour in the snow. So let me just regain where I am. On my testimonials page, I'd like to be able to show loads of information, uh, sorry, I'd like to be able to show um, a list of testimonials relating to CPT injector or Woo injector or my business as a whole. And so when you categorize these things, um, they, actually, they actually gain a lot more relevance and a lot more power. And that's what categories and tags are all about, okay? Um, that's how testimonials and taxonomies work, not testimonials. That's how post types and taxonomies actually work. Um, it's you know it, it's you, you mean you wouldn't write a blog post without categorizing it which doesn't really make sense um so why would you do that with a custom post type and using plugins like cptui you can in fact um add taxonomies as well it's it's the same sort of interface you just um press add new and you type in the name and that's it the system just shows all right now there are again two types of um 
two types of taxonomy you can add, much like post types. There's hierarchical or non-hierarchical. That is to say, are they like categories or are they like tags? Can they have parents and children or not? Categories can, so you predefine a category. Um, you predefine a category uh, as, I don't know, tortoise IT, another one as taxonomy injector and another one as something else. And um, and you can you can say well actually tortoise IT I want to be the uh, I want to be the category or the, um, the the product or whatever the category name for this testimonial and below that so I mean as a subset of that I want to include my products CPT injector taxonomy injector search injector woo injector whatever I've got twenty other things um, but let's say I wanted to have testimonials for somebody else's products on there so you create another top level um, category and then below that so parent and child concept you add child taxonomies okay sorry not child taxonomies child they're called terms but words basically you add child categories we call them categories for now and that's how you had this tree that is hierarchical okay non-hierarchical is you kind of do it on the fly um, so a bit like tags you have a box you type it in you hit return you type another one in you hit return and so on. Um, I actually really don't like tags because I tend to write systems that are quite logical. Um, and actually, I would much rather give my clients a list of things they can check boxes for to start them off. I mean, they can add their own, can't they? Um, and also, it looks a bit of a nicer interface. It's, it's a bit clearer as to what they want to do. So let's add a, let's add, let's, okay, let's together in our minds, let's make a real estate website, okay? So what we're gonna do, post type, what's it gonna be called? Property, yep, good. Property, house, done. So we create our post type, it's called property. What sort of things would we like to categorize or against our property? So we have a taxonomy, and that's how uh, category, okay? What category of, of dwelling is this? Is it a garage, is it a house, is it a flat, is it a loft? So you add in a hierarchical taxonomy to that post type, nice and easy. And in there, you would go into pre-fill all those different things, loft, garage, garden, plot of land, whatever. Now, do you want, with that, um, do you want to have to also ask people to say whether it's for sale or for lease or for rent or whatever else? Well, no, not really. Much like the posts and the case studies being together, you wouldn't want different sorts of tag and category to be together. So we add one taxonomy called category. That's quite familiar. Let's add another another category, another taxonomy to our property post type called um, status, property status, or leasehold or freehold. And you literally provide all these different taxonomies and they will automatically add themselves to the post type, to that interface only. So on the interface for property or house or whatever you want to call it, in the sidebar where you'd normally see categories and tags, you're now going to see um, property categories and um, um, and property status. And you can add as many of you could do property location, jack a box. And these taxonomies are really, really useful because every taxonomy that you add or every um, term, every word that you add, so uh, for rent, will create its own archive page as well. So you can click on slash, you know, yoursite.com slash property slash for rent. And it will show you a list of all the properties that are for rent without doing any work at all. WordPress creates these things for you. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not going to all, I mean, based on this basic amount of information I've given you in the last 43 and a half minutes, I'm not going to ask you to though, go ahead and write your own real estate sites because they wouldn't be anywhere near as good as you can get by buying a plugin off the shelf uh, unless you're a keen coder. But if you like to have a little tinker, a little play around, then yeah, that's a great example. Booking systems, event calendars, uh, real estate systems you know, diaries, anything you want, classified advert systems, just think about it. Classified adverts, we're gonna have a post type, we're gonna call it advert. To that post type, we're going to add a taxonomy called property category. We might have one called location, we might have one called, I don't know, uh, status, it could be like for used or new, anything you want, okay? Now, checking a box is not always the most sensible thing to do when adding new content because it's very limiting. You might want to add another image to the system. What do you want to do? Right, so next chat coming straight into the back of this one, okay? Cus um, custom fields. Now you might have seen a box when you're editing a page or a, a post.
when you scroll down to the depths of the system at the bottom there, when you see um, revisions and all that other sort of rubbish that no one looks at, you'll see a box called Custom Fields, okay? There are plugins on the market, for free in fact, um, that allow you to add your own interface to uh, different post type screens. Now let me explain. Let's say we want to add our property example again. So you want to add square footage, you want to add another picture or 10, you want to add a map, you want to add a, I don't know, the address, the postcode, the latitude and longitude. If you wanted to add how many bathrooms, how many bedrooms, you know, what features it's got. I mean, features are probably better as a taxonomy because you can check boxes. Um, but hang on a second. Wow, my throat's dry. Okay. <clears throat> you can add all these different things to free text boxes, to drop down boxes, to radio buttons, to file upload systems, all for free. There's a plugin by a guy called, I think it's Elliot Condon, I think his name is, or Cordon, or Condon, I think. Um, one of the most useful plugins in the entire WordPress arsenal is called Advanced Custom Fields. And don't get confused and think that Advanced Custom Fields is just the same as the normal Custom Fields box that you get because it doesn't do anything with that custom fields box. It's, it's just a, another way of saying, hey, we can add data, right? We can add extra data to any post type we want or on, on, um, with a combination of rules added. So if you want to pop up some boxes to, for the user to fill in when their post sits inside the featured uh, post category, you can do that. If your, um, if your content sits within the um, uh, projects category, um, then you say, um, show me these custom fields when the post type is equal to um, case studies or projects or whatever. And it is really, really easy. It is a drag and drop type interface. Very, very simple, very easy to understand, very fast to use, and it just works. You activate the plugin and you see a box called custom fields, which will appear in the bottom left hand side of your admin interface near Divi, near settings, or anything else. It will say custom fields. You add what's called a field group and a field group is something which is a bunch of fields that you can add some logic to. And the logic in this case would just be show me this set of custom fields um, when the post type is equal to property. So we want the property fields, you give it a name, property fields, and that's what shows in the box. And you might want to add square footage or galleries or bathrooms or anything you like. And so when what this does is when you go to add a new property to the system, you click on add new property in the post type area, just as normal, what you'll see is a new set of boxes. You'll have the same set of boxes that you've had before, and you'll have a new set of boxes below that, which will say property fields or whatever else, with just a bunch of text areas or drop downs or images and it feels so natural. What you can also do with advanced custom fields is hide some of the native fields. You might think, well actually, I don't want them to see revisions or author or custom fields. And so all you have to do is check the boxes on that field group interface that says, when I'm showing this stuff, don't show that stuff. But that's overcomplicating things, I never do that. Um, now I've written a plugin for Divi uh, called the Advanced Custom Fields Module and that adds um, three, I think, separate modules to uh, the Divi Builder. Um, that three separate modules to the Divi Builder that um, allow you to show the custom field content. Now, this works really well with any of my injector plugins or anybody else's plugins for that matter. But it's a Divi module, okay? So you, any play, page you can add the Divi Builder to, you can also add this um, custom field module. Now, you're going to tell me, well, hang on, if I'm adding custom, if I'm using the Divi Builder, what's the point in custom fields? I can just type this stuff into a box or use the image module or use something else. And the answer is this, you can use that content for sorting and searching. I mean, not with any plugin that, um, that's, that I've written at the moment, but it stores this information in a searchable format against the property in this case, okay? Now, if you're saying that your property is this price and this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms, why don't we add a search plugin in that says, hey, show me all content from the property post type where the price is less than this and where it has more than this many bathrooms. Oh, I see a property system coming together, don't you? And that is by adding a search plugin, a custom post type, and a couple of advanced custom fields. 
Now you can add custom fields yourself. The file, uh, the um, uh, the function you want in PHP is called add underscore meta underscore box, and that allows you to add little boxes onto the builder interface. Um, not the builder interface, sorry, the um, the post type interface. So when you're adding a new post page, anything else. Um, you to add a little box and you put your input fields in and you code it all in and things like f um, file and image uploads are a real pain um, and yeah it take a little time to do but if you don't want to use a plugin then that's what you have to do and I've done one recently with somebody and it works a treat but advanced custom fields you can have uh, any number of fields up and running in minutes and it's so easy so again this isn't an upsell for advanced custom fields but if you're looking at building any dynamic website where you're going to have custom post types, custom taxonomies and things, where you want to build it yourself and not use a plugin, uh, or a plugin off the shelf rather, it might be a bit, um, uh, might be a bit more specialised, um, and you can do that using this combination of plugins. Now I'll do a lot, much longer video, we'll make parking sensors, you can do a much, I'm going to do a much longer video for you another day in the form of a course most likely, which will explain with uh, a screen share and screenshots exactly how to do this, um, but just to say that don't be worried by custom post types. Post types themselves are at the heart of WordPress and all we're doing is adding our own. Now I've worked, uh, I've seen people who do things like church websites before, who want to do things like lists of sermons, okay? Uh, sounds a bit niche and it is. And there are a number of church related, sermon related um, plugins out there on the market or for free or whatever, but make your own. You add a post type called sermons, um, and you add some categories, maybe by who the preacher is, or um, what category it is, what time of year it is. I know the church calendar is quite important in that respect. Um, and you can uh, you can um, show them in a quite a pretty way using the CPT injector uh, and the advanced custom fields module for Divi, um, or any other number of plugins that are available on the market. Mine are not the only plugins. I mean, although, yeah, you know, please do buy them and use them. I'd love that. You know, that supports me and my family. But, you know, that's um, entirely just consumer choice. There are loads in the market you can use, okay? So, I hope this chat has been informative for you. This was a one-take, unplanned chat based on a comment I saw in the Divi Theme Users group this morning. And I just wanted to um, try and enlighten people a little bit because um, custom post apps are not scary. They're nothing you should be worried about at all. Um, they are immensely powerful. Um, and, you know, you can do so much with them. And I, I would encourage more people to do so. Um, and it's not about selling plugins. I mean, you don't need plugins to use custom post types. Um, there's a bunch of free ones in the market anyway. Um, but if you're using the Divi Builder, obviously there are plugins out there which will help you um, for not a lot of money. I mean, for, you know, a couple of cups of coffee's worth of, worth of money. So, um, you know, give them a look. Everything's an elegant marketplace. Um, best place to go and have a look for different plugins and things, I, I think, anyway. Um, and obviously I sell all my stuff on there, so, you know, <laughs> have a look. Um, and if you've got any questions or any comments, I'd love to, love to hear from you all. So um, uh, if you've made it to 53 minutes and 10 seconds, then well done. And I'm hoping that you've, you've benefited from this little chat. All right. Right. Stopping the car, turning it off. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.